Hi guys, and welcome to this lesson on GCSE chemistry tests that you need to know. So in chemistry, there are a number of ways that we test for the presence of different uh, chemicals or elements in a substance. And there are certain tests we need to be aware of and describe for our GCSE chemistry test. So we're gonna run through the tests in this session and there is an accompanying worksheet for you to have a go at some exam style questions that um, ask you about these tests. Um, there is also a revision poster, which I'm gonna use right now to run through um, the tests that we need to remember. You also have access to that on the link in the description for this video. Um, so you can use that as you wish um, to revise from. So I have categorized the tests into both metals and then non-metals. Um, so let's have a look, first of all, at the metals. So the metals are divided into the flame tests and the insoluble hydroxide. So let's start with flame tests. Now to do a flame test, we get a, a metal rod and it's got a metal loop on the end of it. And we dip that into a metal salt. So for example, we might pick potassium chloride. We dip our metal loop into the, into the salt and then put the, that end into the flame of a Bunsen burner. And it would produce a color depending on the metal ion present. So for lithium, it produces a red flame. For sodium, it produces a yellow orange flame. For potassium, it produces a purple flame. For calcium, it produces an orangey red flame. And for copper, it produces a green flame. Now we need to know how each test is performed and the color that is produced. Um, now a common exam question is, what if I had a combination of lithium and potassium chloride? Well, a flame test wouldn't be overly helpful because the colors, um, if I tested both of those together, would mix. And so I wouldn't end up getting a clear red or a clear purple. Um, so a flame test is only really relevant if I know that I've got just one metal ion present in my salt. Excellent stuff. The next test for metals is insoluble hydroxides. Now, many metal hydroxides are insoluble, which means when I add sodium hydroxide to their salts, they react to produce a precipitate. And the color of the precipitate can be used to tell us which metal was present. So the colors are calcium hydroxide is white, copper hydroxide is blue, Iron hydroxide is either green or brown, depending on the oxidation state of the iron. Now, if you need a hand with oxidation states, drop a question in the comments now, and I'll be sure to record um, a separate video on oxidation states um, very soon. But if you're after that sooner, um, drop a, a message into the comments. Magnesium hydroxide is also white and aluminium hydroxide is white, but when we add more sodium hydroxide, that precipitate re-dissolves. And so that's how we can separate out the aluminium from the calcium and magnesium. Now you might say, how can we distinguish then between calcium and magnesium hydroxide if um, they're both white? Well, I might get some of the salt and also do a flame test, and then the calcium will produce an orange red flame and that would help us to distinguish the color, the, the metal ion, sorry, that's present. Those are the tests that we need to remember for the metals. Now the non-metals, um, I've separated it into gases and salts. The gases we need to be able to identify are chlorine, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. Now, hopefully you're super familiar with these. You should have done these over many, many years in school, um, but it's worth just going over them to remember what they are. So for chlorine, we. Uh, wet a piece of litmus paper, we make a piece of litmus paper nice and damp, and then we pop it into the gas we're testing. And if it's chlorine, the litmus paper will turn white. That happens because chlorine is a bleach, it will bleach all the colour out of the litmus paper, turning it white. Oxygen. Oxygen um, will relight a glowing splint. So if I take a splint, set it on fire, blow it out, when it's still glowing, it's got those glowing embers still going, pop it into your gas. If it's oxygen, the splint will relight, which I thought was pretty, pretty amazing the first time I saw it. Hopefully you've done that one in the lab too. Uh, the next one, hydrogen. Hydrogen uh, makes that familiar squeaky pop. So you grab a lit splint, you pop it in the gas and the hydrogen goes and makes a squeaky pop. Um, that was a terrible imitation, but hopefully you've seen that in the lab. If not, there was, there's definitely YouTube videos showing you this test. Um, so hydrogen makes a squeaky pop. 
And carbon dioxide, again, you've probably seen this one a million times over, but if we think we've got carbon dioxide, we pass the gas through lime water and lime water turns cloudy if carbon dioxide is present. So those are our gas tests. Um, and finally, our non-metal salts. So this is when we're testing for things like carbonates, sulfates, and halides. And I'll go through what a halide is in case you're not sure in a second. So a carbonate, think things like sodium carbonate. In fact, this is one you can do at home. Um, if you have baking powder or um, bicarbonate of soda, that contains a carbonate, um, usually a sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. Um, if you add lemon juice or vinegar to that, you will see this test and carbon dioxide will be produced. And what happens is um, the acid and the carbonate react, producing carbon dioxide. And if we test that gas by passing it through lime water, we would know that a carbonate was originally present. Testing for sulfates um, is a little bit more unusual. We add hydrochloric acid and barium chloride. And what happens is the barium reacts with the sulfate ions to produce a precipitate of barium sulfate. So barium sulfate is insoluble. It produces a white precipitate and that would only happen if the sulfates of ions are present. So that must have meant we had a metal sulfate. And finally, the halides. Now, a halide is a, a salt where chlorine, bromine, or iodine have been reacted to form the salt, so like sodium chloride. And to identify the halogen that we have there, we add nitric acid and silver nitrate. Um, give it a little mix. And what that does is produces a silver precipitate. So a silver chloride, silver bromide, or silver iodide precipitate. Chloride would produce a white precipitate, bromide produces a cream precipitate, and iodide produces a pale yellow precipitate. I want you to think for a second, what might be the flaw with that test? If you said that those colours are all extremely similar, then you are correct. They are all extremely similar, and that is a common exam question as well, why that test is not necessarily ideal. It is because um, Chloride, bromide and iodide all produce really similar coloured precipitates and it's fine when you've got all three next to each other to compare but if you have one on your own I might think it looks cream, you might think it looks white and somebody else might think it looks pale yellow and then we don't know what salt we've got. So those are the tests we need to know for GCSE chemistry. Um, by all means now go and have a go at the worksheet where there are some exam, past exam questions looking at these tests so you can get an idea of the kinds of things that are asked. I hope you all found that super duper useful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.